Grade 5 Math, number 7.8, Compare Mixed Number Factors and Products. How does the size of the product compare to the size of one factor when multiplying fractions greater than one? We're going to find out. Just remember, the identity property says any number multiplied by one stays the same. Three-fourths times one equals three-fourths. Remember that from last year, from fourth grade? We can make a general statement about the comparable size of a product when one factor is equal to one, less than one, or greater than one. Pay attention to that little green star because I'll show you at the end. So when we compare the sizes of the products when a factor is equal to one, less than one, or greater than one, we can make a general statement. Watch. Emma is baking and needs two and a fourth cups of flour. How much would she need if she cut the recipe in half? So it's like saying half of two and one fourth or two and one fourth times a half. We could have even just said half times two and one fourth and done it that way. The half could have been on either side, okay? So if we want to cut two and one fourth in half, here's one cup, two cups, and a fourth of a cup. When we cut the fourths in half, we put a little line down the middle of each fourth and we realize that we have eight pieces. We have eighths. Two little eighths is equal to one fourth. So half of this fourth is going to be an eighth. See that? So we'll take one of these eighths and one of the cups and we'll have half. One and one eighth is a half. How much would she need if she made one and a half times the recipe? Well, we know what a half is. So if she had one and a half times the recipe, she'd have the recipe amount plus that, wouldn't she? We'd add these two together because that's a half and that would be the one, so that would be one and a half. So let's see. Two and one fourth is what she normally needed and she needs a half more. So we add another one cup and one of the little eighths from the fourth. And we get one, two, three cups and a fourth and an eighth. And we know that a fourth is two eighths, so two eighths and one eighth is three eighths. The product will be one and a half times more than two and one fourth because we multiplied it by a number that was more than one. See? So it was bigger than two and one fourth. When we multiplied it by a number, a fraction smaller than two and one fourth, smaller than one, the number, the product ended up being smaller than the two and one fourth. Remember we did that video? Well, we can use a diagram or a number line to show the relationship between the products. When a fraction larger than one is multiplied or had its size changed by a number. One times two and one fourth is two and one fourth. It's equal to because of the identity property. There's that little green star again. Keep paying attention to the green stars. I'll show you at the end. So if we have one times two and one fourth, that means we have it one time. So our answer is two and one fourth. When we have two thirds times two and one fourth, what we do is we take two and one fourth on the number line, which is right here, and we take this entire two, one four, two and one fourth amount and split it into thirds because we need two thirds of it. So we need it split into threes. So if you look, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pieces in two and one fourths. If we need to split them into threes, that means we could split it into a third, a third, and a third, right? Then we split it into three pieces, thirds. If we take two of those thirds, where would we be on the blue number line? We would be at one and a half. Look at that. We're right in between one and two at one and a half, so the answer is one and a half. And what do you notice when we multiply by a small fraction like this? Our product is smaller than the two and one fourth. See? Up here it was equal to because of identity property in the one. Here we multiplied by a little fraction that was less than one, so our product was smaller than our factor of two and one fourth. Now we're going to multiply it by one and one third. Do you know what's going to happen? It's going to be three and it's going to be bigger than two and one fourth because this is bigger than one. So let's see what happens. So here's our two and one fourth, right? And when we split it into thirds up here, we saw that 
when we went one, two, three lines, that was one third. So we're going to do the same thing. One, two, three lines, that's one third. One, two, three lines, that's another third. One, two, three lines, that's another third. And one, two, three lines, that's another third. Well, these three thirds equals one whole with one third left over. See? So that's the one and one thirds. Where does it put us on the blue number line? It puts us on three. So one and one third times two and one fourth is three. And it's greater than the two and one fourth because we multiplied by a mixed number that was bigger than one. There's that silly green star again. All right, so is the unknown factor less than one, greater than one, or equal to one? Some unknown factor times one and one third is two and two thirds. So do you think it's bigger than one, smaller than one, or one? If our product is two and two thirds, you can look at this one and tell. It's bigger than this one, so it must be bigger than one, right? So it's going to be greater than, okay? It's going to be bigger. How about here? Something times one and three fourths is going to be seven twelfths. Is it going to be less than one, greater than one, or equal to one? We look at this number and we can tell. It's smaller than this number, so it's going to be less than. Some factor here times two and a half is going to be four and seven twelfths. Is it, this going to be less than one, greater than one, or equal to one? We can look at this one and tell. It's going to be greater than one, bigger than one, because our answer is bigger than two and a half. How about here? Something times one and a half is one, times one and an eighth is one and an eighth. Is this going to be bigger than one, less than one, or equal to one? If you said equal to, you're right. And now here's our silly little green star. Knowing these rules will help with homework and tests. If your answer is too big or too small, you'll notice something is wrong and you'll be able to fix it before you hand it in. Wouldn't it be great to notice something on your test is wrong before you hand it in and you can catch it and erase it real quick and say, oh, that's not supposed to be bigger than one. That fraction there is making it so it's supposed to be less than one. I did something wrong and then you can fix it, see? So this is a very important thing to know. All right? I'll see you next video. You can use this when you do your work and keep up the good work.